Hi, in this video, I'm going to share some tips. I think there are five tips on um, how you can prepare for writing and reading exams where you have to manage your time. Now, I'm really talking about the IELTS exam and about the Cambridge exams. You can apply these tips and ideas to any reading and writing exam. Um, but I just want to talk a little bit, first of all, about some of the differences between IELTS and um, the Cambridge papers. So if you're taking IELTS with the reading and writing papers, most students are fairly clear about how long they need to spend on each question. So in IELTS writing, you should spend no more than 20 minutes on task one and therefore about 40 minutes on task two. That division of time is very important. And in fact, if you take IELTS, you will see that on the question paper. All right. And it is there for a reason. If you spend half an hour on task one, you don't give yourself enough time for task two. So IELTS writing, 20 minutes and 40 minutes. IELTS reading, you have always got three different texts. And most people make sure they have longer for the third and final text. Now, there is some debate, even among English teachers, about whether the third text is really harder or not. Regardless of that fact, it actually has more questions because in IELTS reading, you have 40 questions on three papers. That's not that you can't divide that. So the third text has the most questions. Therefore, I would recommend, if you can, the first reading paper, 15 minutes, the second reading paper, 20 minutes, the third reading paper, 25 minutes. And the other thing with IELTS is, um, well, and Cambridge, you need to also make sure that you copy your answers onto the answer sheet. Uh, in IELTS, you don't get extra time to do that on the reading test. You have to do it as you go along. So my advice would be, do all the questions you can on paper one, then copy over the answers. Do all the questions you can on paper two, then copy over the answers. OK, because that way you make sure that if you run out of time, at least you've got the first two reading papers on your answer sheet. Now, with the Cambridge exams, um, you guys have the use of English questions, too. And those you don't have to do that in IELTS. So that's lucky for you. Um, and it's really important that you have a clear time in your head for each of those use of English questions. So the last one, the keyword transformation, that's quite tricky for most candidates. You might want to be a little bit more generous with your time for the keyword transformations. The other ones you really need to get through pretty, pretty quickly, okay? To give yourself the time for the reading questions. In the Cambridge exams for the writing questions, you have two, quest two writing tasks as well, but the time should be more or less equally divided. You want about 40, 45 minutes per question, okay? So with all that being said, um, here are some tips, um, more general tips on dealing with time in exams. So the first thing that you need to do, and you need to do a lot, is to practice. So you need to practice authentic, real past exam papers. Particularly with IELTS, there are lots of older questions which might not be relevant to today's IELTS and the internet seems to be full of IELTS questions that aren't really IELTS questions. So if you are preparing for IELTS, 
you really must make sure that you are using proper exam materials. Um, so lots and lots of practice exams, mock exams, we call them in English. And when you do this, you must do this to time. Okay, it's no good thinking, hey, I'm going to do a IELTS reading exam now and then get stuck and then look for a new word on your phone and then have a little chat on WhatsApp. That, that's, <laughs> it doesn't help you to do that, okay? So mock exams, you must do under exam conditions and you must stick to the time. So if the exam is supposed to be 90 minutes long, you must stop at 90 minutes, even if you're not finished. Even if there are questions you can't answer, at the end of 90 minutes, you stop. Second tip um, is to pre-plan your timing. So that means that when you go into an exam, you know exactly how you are going to organize your time, exactly. And there's no debate about that, okay? So with those use of English questions, you must know if it's four minutes or five or six for each one and you stick to it. Even if there's one that you don't finish, you must keep moving. Um, so yeah, you've got to stick to your plan, okay? Too many times candidates get stuck on a question and they stay there with a difficult question and they still can't answer it, but they waste 10 minutes. That is really bad exam technique. Now, something that you may not realize about IELTS is that on the reading paper, because they IELTS is designed, it's not like the Cambridge exams, it's not for a level. IELTS is designed to test you at every level on the CEFR, okay? So there are questions for people at band one. Those are the easy ones that most people can answer no problem. There are questions to test people at band 8.5 and band nine. Those are the questions I find really difficult because they're hard. So the point is that if you are aiming, most people aim for kind of between a five and a seven somewhere here, you should be able to answer all of these questions but there's going to be some at the top that you can't answer and it's okay. Those questions are not for you. So if you want an IELTS band seven, you do not need to get those questions right. The questions for the people at eight and 8.5 and nine. So keep moving through the paper, keep sticking to your plan. That is the best strategy. Um, and I think that is all I need to say about exam um, timing. Um, I'm just going to close by telling you about a student I used to work with. Um, she took IELTS with me and it was a very long process. She's got very complex learning difficulties and very complex mental health issues as well. So she was given a lot of extra time. She had an hour and a half for the IELTS reading exam, which is double. Uh, no, it's not. It's 50% more. But because of all her issues, she really cannot manage time. And it terrified her. She was terrified. And um, she took the exam and she ran out of time and she didn't finish and she was all in a panic um, and I said are you looking at the clock in your exam and she's like no 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 I can't I can't look at the clock and I, I had to teach her that the clock was her friend the clock is not there to trick you or make you do something bad that clock in the exam room is there to guide you through the exam it's there to help you so use it don't be like this student and pretend there is no clock because it's really there to help you plan your exam and do as well as you should do
My name is Sarah. Um, I'm an English teacher and language anxiety coach. I help people overcome their fear of speaking and using English. Thank you for watching my video.